that video I made about Golang two weeks ago, that was just this. It was just me saying, hey, this is dumb. Stop doing this. Do this. This is better. Over time, I have found myself really, really disliking working with backends that are heavily detached from their front ends. And what I mean by this is I mean I don't like working with a backend that is just like a REST API, it's an express server or a Hono server or something, something that's just returning JSON and sending that down to some separate front end project or React app or whatever. I have really found that I do not like working with these and I much, much, much prefer the full stack solution and I want to show you guys why. Now, before I get in and show you guys that, this video definitely requires a pretty heavy disclaimer. Uh, this is going to be a very perspective-based topic, and this is definitely something where I totally understand in a large team or in some other scenario why it would make total sense to have a separate backend which is isolated and it's its own big thing. It's just a little backend world, and that backend connects to a bunch of different servers. It's reused in a bunch of different places. I totally understand and get that. What I'm talking about here is, from my perspective, someone who works on very small teams and we're working on projects that are contained within, they're not too enormous right now, and they're in the early stages. So everyone is basically working as a full stack dev, I work as a full stack dev, and I want to show you guys why it makes so much more sense for us to just use these full stack solutions, and this is really kind of an extension of that video I made recently where I'm like, why I'm not using Golang too much. Um, and that's mostly just because I'm not a huge fan of the HTMX stuff. Uh, I think it's good, but it's not really for me. Uh, I prefer doing it in JS. And really the point is I prefer doing everything in a full stack environment. I want one project front end and back end connected together. And let me show you why. Um, so this right here is a tiny little example app I built here, which is just serving some data. Uh, this is static data, but imagine that this data is being pulled out of a database. So. Uh, in the load function of the SvelteKit app, we are pulling in data from an external directory and from just the SvelteKit server. Because remember, in SvelteKit, we have a server. And uh, I see oftentimes, like in the Discord and stuff, and when I'm talking to people, you know, uh, you guys have like these separate, you'll have like a Hono server or something, and then that'll be connected to a SvelteKit app or something. Basically, what you'll end up doing is what I did in here, where I created, so this is the project. So I have my separate backend here. So this is some server. This is very similar to what InsiderViz currently has, and it sucks to work with, where we have, a, imagine the separate backend is a big Golang server. So we have this server here, which is has a bunch of JSON endpoints. So this JSON endpoint is going to send down some sample data. We spin up the server, whatever. We can jump back over here to our actual SvelteKit app. On the page.server within our load function, we need to get our sample data. So... The way you do that with an external thing is you have to do const res equals await fetch whatever, then you have to parse the JSON there and you have to type it, you have to do error checking, do all that stuff. It becomes this giant annoying game of basic, it's basically just data proxying, especially when you're in a smaller team. Uh, most of the time what you're going to end up doing is like you're just going to end up duplicating your backend code. Like all we're doing here is basically the exact same thing we did in the Hono thing we just have to add more crap and boilerplate on top. It sucks. And that's what happens with Insider Viz is you go to this Golang server, you fetch some data, it sends it down in JSON. We receive that on our next JS server. We parse that JSON, we type it, and then we send that JSON back down to the front end. We're just doing thing to thing to thing when we could just go thing to thing. It's really, really, it doesn't have to be as complicated as I thought it did. Like, this is getting the exact same data. And if we just imagine it's a database, query or something like that, that database query can happen on the SvelteKit server just as well as it can happen on the Hono server. So this is two different ways to get the exact same data, and this is just a hundred times simpler and easier, because if you look right here, we have type safety. So now this sample data here, we just pulled it out. If this was a drizzle statement, we would have pulled it out, gotten our type safety, we return it, then when we go into our client component, we get our type safety right here. It knows what it is. I don't have to add all this extra boilerplate and it just works. And that right there, that simplicity, that end-to-end -end type safety, that just lack of boilerplate, it all just fitting together nicely, that's why I prefer the full stack experience. I prefer to use something like SvelteKit or Next.js or Remix or Golang plus HTMX. Golang plus HTMX basically does the exact same thing. It's tightly coupling your front end to your back end. And the way I find myself wanting to build stuff and the way, honestly, I recommend other people build stuff these days is to uh, 
instead of separating super hard in having a front end team and a back end team, we start sort of thinking about just making full stack teams. Like I, I know it's harder to be a full stack dev and there's more to learn. I get that. But you know, when I'm working with my friends and we're working on these projects and I'm doing all this stuff, it makes a lot more sense for us to do stuff all the way up and down the stack and condense it into one place where we're all working together. Cause I think we can make much better code this way. We used to do it where we had um, a back end team, which is basically just me. And then we had a front end team, which was them and they'd make their stuff. And then we'd like have these like sort of contract negotiations where we go back and forth and do stuff. But you know, I didn't really know what was happening on the front end. They didn't really know what was happening on the back end. The whole thing was just kind of fucking stupid. Um, so if you're able to, and you're on a smaller team, uh, just utilize the full stack tools we have. Um, I, for the longest time, I didn't give these frameworks the credit that they deserve. You can do all of your business logic, all of your database work, all of your everything in your Next.js or your Svelkit backend. It just works. It works really freaking well. And I highly recommend you guys take advantage of this and stop just proxying your requests. That video I made about Golang two weeks ago, that was just this. It was just me saying, hey, this is dumb. Stop doing this. Do this. This is better. Thanks for watching.